Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with further benchmarks of the Ryzen 3000 series. Spoiler alert, the 3600 CPU is looking to be incredibly impressive, often trading blows with the i7-8700K and absolutely demolishing the Ryzen 5 2600 that, of course, it's replacing. So let's start things out with some Geekbench results before moving over to some updated Sysoft Sandra results. The CPU is scoring 5456 in single core score, which is, well, really good. And multi core score uh, is hitting 27,463. This result was, update, was updated on June the 7th, and it is using the Aurorus X470 Gaming 7 Wi-Fi motherboard. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it is, of course, made by Gigabyte. And the memory is clocked at 1500 MHz, but of course, because of DDR, uh, speeds. This means it's running at 3000 megahertz, which is phenomenal because this means that we actually have a nice result of fast memory finally. The level 1 instruction and data cache mirrors what we already know about uh, Matisse, 32 kilobytes per core of each respective uh, level 1 cache. And level 2 cache is 512 kilobytes, of course. And level 3 cache is 16 megabytes times 2. Just as a quick reminder, the 3600 is a 6-core processor, 12 threads, and is comprised of two CCXs. So each CCX has three CPUs enabled. So you don't have a 4-CPU uh, CCX and another CCX which is running two cores. No, it is three processor cores on each CCX, which of course provides you six cores total. And this is much like how the 2600 uh, functions as well. As for the other scores, they are mighty impressive. So what I decided to do to give us a better indication of how the 8700K and the 3600 would compare against one another, I ran a Geekbench on the i7-8700K using stock settings, and then I ran it a second time by locking all of the cores at 4.2 GHz. Obviously, mileage may vary with your results, but we have a single core score of the i7-8700K at stock of 5600 points compared to the 3600, which is scoring 5450 points. And the 8700K at 4.2 GHz scores 5370 points. But the big winner of the results would be the multi-core performance of the 3600, scoring almost 27,500 against the stock frequency of the i7-8700K, which scores around 25,000 points. The natural caveats are that the i7-8700K does overclock really well. Actually, the sample that I've got hits 5 gigahertz on an AIO not being delidded. And secondly, we are not seeing the 3600 really that tuned uh, with these results. So, for example, if we tweak memory timings, if we increase memory clock frequencies and so on, we may get much better performance out of the 3600. And also, it's only Geekbench. So, not necessarily a great indicator of, say, games and other titles. But perhaps the score which is the most telling, at least to me anyway, is actually Sysoft Sandra. So Sysoft Sandra, we have a, uh, once again, Ryzen 5 3600 6 core CPU. It's running at up to 4.19 gigahertz and is running at what appears to be 2666 megahertz for the memory. Uh, obviously the cache uh, structure remains identical, so I won't go through that all again. But if you cast your eyes to the multimedia results, so this would be integer, long integer, quad integer, single float, double float, quad float, as well as the overall score. The overall score, just to make things simple so I don't go insane as I'm reading this out to you, is 623.43 which is absolutely insane. Um, how, how insane? Well, 
if you compare that to the results of a Ryzen 7, sorry, Ryzen 5 2600, uh, obviously it depends on the memory configuration and all that stuff, but typically the overall score for 2600 is around 320 to 350 points. Uh, there's a really nice average result that a user on Reddit has actually discovered, uh, and it scores 334, and the user in question is S. Bradder, so actually props to him for finding this nice average result. But if you also look at the other scores, so the 3600 trounces the 2600, and actually it's much closer to what you would expect for the i7-8700K. Yes, the results were a little slower or a little faster, depending on the benchmark, or rather on the test, but overall, you can say that this is within margin of error stuff. Obviously, if you've got faster memory or you slightly overclock and that type of thing, it's probably going to make the difference. I imagine just tweaking the timings of the memory may actually change these scores significantly, as obviously this score is only also being uh, achieved with a memory clock of just 2,666 megahertz, which, as you probably are aware, that's not exactly super duper fast for Ryzen, really, for a memory clock. It's not particularly fast for Intel, but as we know, uh, Ryzen scores are actually a lot more sensitive to the performance of um, to the performance of uh, memory. So what's going on here? Well, one thing we do know, of course, is that AMD are uh, reporting that we have around a 15% IPC gain compared to the previous generation of processors, which obviously isn't going to increase the speed significantly, but we also have monumental changes to the FPU. Two times wider data path and EUs, as well as LSUs, which means that, quite frankly, uh, things such as AVX performance and general floating point performance are just going to be considerably faster with this CPU. As is always the case with new hardware, I'm not advocating that you pre-order anything until you actually see real benchmarks, because at the end of the day, we don't really know yet how it performs in a wide variety of different games and also in a controlled test environment. Well, I guess some people do, because technically it is in certain people's possessions, like we know, for example, Puget Systems have it, and also a lot of retailers, but the average reviewer does not have access to this chip yet, and certainly even if they did, they cannot publish the score yet because of these little pesky things known as NDAs, and clearly many people are going to be upgrading to these CPUs for the purposes of gaming. I'm going to take a stab in the dark here and say that a lot of uh, users are going to just purchase the 3600 if it performs fairly well, uh, simply because it's going to be a fairly cheap chip for gaming. I mean, just for the sake of argument, let's say it's roughly on par with a 8700K, that means that you could pair this chip with a card such as an RTX 2070 or an RTX 2080, or even the new Navi chips when they do come out, and be like, well, I've got a CPU that's good to go for a number of years, and of course you can simply upgrade that down the line to an 8 or a 12 core CPU or what have you, if you so desire. I'm going to be interested to see what happens when the Ryzen 4000 series comes out, whether AMD are going to have any backwards compatibility there, I'm probably going to guess not, but at the very least for this generation you're going to be really good. Oh, and there's also a very small uh, piece of news concerning uh, the next generation of server CPUs from AMD known as Rome. There's a report doing the rounds at the moment, I'll link it in the description of this video, that Rome has a base frequency of 2.2 GHz for the 64 core part, which is made much more impressive when you look at the TDP figures, which is just 225 watts, which is actually kind of nuts. Uh, obviously, this has not been verified by AMD, and we also don't know if there's going to be higher uh, TDP SKUs, which would have higher frequencies, but either way, just taking this at face value, the result is really amazing. To round out our coverage of the Ryzen 3000 series, I'd also like to bring your attention to an interview with Charles Chiang, who is the CEO of MSI. He had a recent interview with Tom's Hardware. I'll link the interview, of course, in the description of this very video. And he discussed a couple of very interesting points, the first of which is that AMD no longer want to 